Hello everybody and welcome to a very quick uh, knockoff review. I'm going through some of those uh, knockoffs I recently got through my Sir Toys parcel. And this is the, I think it's the Age of Extinction version of Crosshairs. He's not going to sit straight. I've got the gun mounted on the underside like it says you can do, but that then prevents him from sitting straight. This is based on his movie verse figure, but it's been oversized. Uh, they did opt for spraying the windscreen silver. I'm actually going to see if I can get some sort of paint stripper or something on there. I don't I have to check again what color it is on the inside. But if it's translucent, that would definitely work better for me. Uh, the actual color of the bodywork, etc., is really nice. It's a good looking piece. Uh, lots of die cast in amongst here as well, so it's a nice solid piece. To give you an idea of the actual size of this, uh, many of you might not have this to hand yet, but it's the uh, oversized Studio Series Bumblebee. Because uh, I've got these, in my opinion, these scale remarkably well with the oversized figures. These are almost kind of Human Alliance size. Now let me bring in a figure that you may have. It's the Legendary Toys version of MPM Prime. Uh, so you see, these are far too big to scale with that kind of movie verse, aren't they? But anyway, I'm digressing. Basically, the idea behind these is I have the likes of my Toy World Prime, then I have the uh, Wei Zhang oversized hound. Uh, I'm slowly building up kind of a last night Age of Extinction cast, albeit Grimlock is far too small if you were going to scale them with him. And this is the version 3 that came up on Sir Toys. It's cheap and cheerful, and I thought, you know what? It might not look exactly right, but I think scale-wise, that's going to work. Transformation is relatively straightforward. Look at that visible bot mode. Uh, these are the biggest problems. Uh, these tab into kind of like a translucent tab. I was just a bit dubious of applying too much pressure to those. There we go. They just untab from here. These are going to untab from the bonnet section like that. This will lift up and away. Uh, let's just uh, untab from the bottom of the feet there as well. Come on, out you come. One, two. I think the fact that he has a cloak and everything in the film kind of lets us off a little bit with the shell forming on this guy. So let's move that cloak back, that piece back, that piece back. These legs are going to turn on those knees. Foot is going to come down. And we have a little heel spur on the base. Again on this side, turn on the knee. Be careful because, yep, it's on a mushroom peg and the mushroom peg does like to work its way out. Foot down, heel spur down. Bring these parts of the arms back, which allows these to drop slightly. This part of the arm back, allowing the arm to drop. It's gonna come in. And that will come in, like so. We've got these then, got these kind of wing panels on the underside there with these guns on kind of either side of those. So let's just uh, bring this back panel down a little bit. This one comes up. These come out, and that is basically the transformation. And here we have Cheapo Crosshairs on the turntable. Uh, he does exactly what he needs to, doesn't he? There's not a great deal to him. He does have an extremely massive amount of back kibble, but when you put him with the rest of the team, he doesn't look hugely out of place. It's just making it work. He's a really cheap, affordable option. And to be honest with you, he's going to be a decent stand-in for a masterpiece crosshair. I mean, I've got him in my slightly oversized collection, so not only would I need a masterpiece crosshair, I'd then need them to oversize said masterpiece. So for now, this guy is definitely an affordable option. Looks good and almost fits. So here he is alongside some of his comrades, and I don't think they look too disproportionate. I think uh, the colors kind of match nicely, especially like the kind of metallic side of things. The problem is always going to be Bumblebee. We've literally had the MPM Bumblebee 
And that's the only version of him we've really got in masterpiece scale. I mean, there is several KOs of the Age of Extinction and the Last Night Bumblebee uh, done kind of oversized. I've got some of those to review as well. Uh, Scale-wise, they don't look too bad, but they are a little bit puny and uh, very kind of simplified. He's definitely comes across a lot better than what Bumblebee does. And this is actually the kind of better of the two Bumblebees, this is the die-cast one. Uh, like I said, Studio Series Bumblebee and the kind of premium Studio Series Bumblebee oversized. They're going to be different reviews. But yeah, Crosshairs doesn't look that out of place, does he? Not really. Let's just get a little bit up close and personal before we leave you. Yeah, like I said, it's just a very, very quick kind of touch and base on some of the stuff that I got coming through. Head sculpt isn't terrible. We've got this kind of weird uh, Transformers 4 emblem on there. Paint apps a little bit lackluster on the inside of those arms, but this is nice. This is kind of die cast around here. You've got the die cast roof panel as well, which kind of bends and flexes backwards. But he does exactly what he needs to. He's never going to win any awards for originality. And the joints are okay. Pretty much everything's on a mushroom peg, which does tend to pop off. But for a standing figure, I think the kind of version three crosshairs works a treat. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. As usual, I've included a link where this can be purchased. And until next time, myself and the rest of the Collectibles household, thank you all for watching. Goodbye.